welcome to Circle Sanctuary's 2020 birthday celebration. Thank you so much for joining us today. My name is Emily. I'll be coordinating today's event. I also am the office administrator, I am office administrator and membership partner of the Circle Sanctuary. A little bit about Circle Sanctuary. We're a nonprofit organization. We run a 200 acre nature preserve and a nature spirituality center in Barneville, Wisconsin. We're a little bit outside of Madison, so if you ever get a chance to visit, please do once we get our in-person events going again. We do uh, month monthly full moon circles. Uh, we do online and um, podcast presentations as well. We do our Sabbath celebrations, eight a year. Pagan Spirit Gathering is a really large um, summer solstice event that we host off-site. This year is being planned for Missouri. We also host uh, um, workshops and sanctuary days at our headquarters in Barnabas. If um, you find yourself enjoying the presentations today or some of our other content, please consider giving a donation to Circle Sanctuary. We get our most of our funding from event registrations and also from donations and memberships from people like you who enjoy the things that we do. You can go over to our website at circlesanctuary.org to make a donation or to sign up for a membership. Our basic membership is just $5 a month. Um, so. If you are able to sign up for a membership, great, or just do a one-time donation, that's great too. We appreciate it all. So a little bit uh, more about what we're going to do to be doing today. We want to thank you for being here, joining us virtually. Normally, our Earth Day event would be happening at our headquarters. So we're get we're getting a little lucky this year to get to connect with people in different ways. Um, putting a positive spin on this all. We're doing our best to connect, stay connected with our community um, from afar. So we'll, I would like to go over our schedule for the day and then um, do some introductions so we can get to know each other a little bit better. At every Circle Sanctuary event, if you've ever been to one, you know, we start off with a welcome circle and um, introduce ourselves, tell our name, where we came from, and um, our pronouns. And then today we're gonna do something a little bit different. I want us to share a little bit about what we're doing to honor Earth Day every day. So go ahead if you want to get started in the comments section. We're gonna go over the schedule next and um, we'll circle back to the introduction again. So our schedule today for Earth Day is going to be from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. Central Time. If you're connecting with us from a different time zone, go ahead and adjust these times to make sense with where you're coming from. All of our presentations are gonna come on to our uh, Circle Sanctuary Facebook page at the scheduled time. They'll start playing on the page right away. Uh, you won't necessarily have to do anything except for maybe click on the video. Then after the event, all the videos will be archived on the Circle Sanctuary Facebook page and then also um, on the Circle Sanctuary YouTube channel. So again, this event or this presentation started at 10 o'clock at 1030. We're going to have our presentation with Reverend Jake. They're going to present to us about direction direct action for climate justice. So things that we can do in our everyday life to live more sustainably and also how we can be advocating for the natural world um, and different methods for that. So uh, our next presentation after that is going to be at 1115. There will be a 15 minute break between when Reverend Jake's presentation ends and then Reverend Selena Fox's uh, presentation at 1115 begins and you'll see it's going to be the same throughout the whole schedule. We'll have 15 minute breaks so if you need to run off and do something in between you can and then come back and uh, and view the next video. So Reverend Selena Fox at 1115 will be presenting 50 years of Earth Day. So Selena's going to give us a quick um, overview of the history of Earth Day and um, her contributions to it and the con contributions of Circle Sanctuary. Then 
Again, 15 minute break, it's going to be the same uh, um, between all the videos. At 11.45, we'll have our Earth Day family story time with Reverend Florence. Florence does most of the, um, of the family programming at Circle Sanctuary Nature Preserve. And uh, she does a really great job with the kids. This is a great time for you to gather the kids in, enjoy some time together, um, learning and singing and just getting a little bit of joy and celebrating Earth Day um, with some songs and some stories. If you don't have kids, still totally cool to join in with the family programming, bring in that joy embrace your child spirit. So then we're going to have a little bit of a longer break. Um, that presentation is 15 minutes. So there's going to be a half hour break and then at 1230, uh, 12.30 p.m. Reverend Dennis will be presenting about eco-psychology. Dennis is a professor as is like everyday job and he teaches psychology he's going to be presenting to us about um, you know how human nature is affected by the natural world and really um, how important it is for human psychology so that should be pretty interesting and then at a let uh, at 1.15, we're going to have our main ritual, A Circle for Planet Earth, with Reverend Selena Fox. She's going to be presenting to us from one of Circle Sanctuary's sacred sites. I think it's going to be the Stone Circle. So that's one of, a, it's definitely a favorite site and one that we really like to have our Earth Day presentations at. Um, if it's there, if it's somewhere else, I know there's so many beautiful places at Circle Sanctuary, but I think it's going to be the Stone Circle. Uh, after Selena's Circle for Planet Earth, it's just going to be a, a short break of five minutes, and then we're going to do a quick final farewell. We're going to say um, a big thank you to everybody who joined us today for all of our presentation, or our presenters, and we're going to give you some more ways that you can continue to connect with us in the coming weeks and months, and hopefully um, to continue to connect with us in a long-term relationship with Circle Sanctuary. So again, just visit the page at the scheduled time for the presentation. And if you miss anything, it's going to be archived here and also over at YouTube. If you haven't already, go ahead and get started um, with your introduction. If Share anything, share what you're comfortable with. Um, again, that's name, location, um, and then how you're honoring Earth Day every day. So um, how are you living sustainably and um, how are you saying thank you, thank you to the Earth for all that it provides. So um, if you just want to share some details, share a story with us or um, share some pictures of what you're doing, any of that would be great. We'd love to get to know you a little bit better. Okay, so again, my name is Emily, coordinator today. And I am going to give you a quick tour of my backyard where a lot of the action for um, us doing our best to be sustainable happens. Okay, hi again. We're in my backyard now in uh, Black Earth. We have a quarter acre lot and most of the work that we do um, in our yard is in the backyard. Uh, I have um, a small family. All right, my partner and our two-year-old are out here working. We've got a couple projects ongoing and I just wanted to show you a quick tour of the things that we are doing. So here you'll see a couple of our raised beds. We've got greenhouses on two of them. We're actually um, already starting to grow some stuff in these. You can't really tell from this. Um, but in here we've got some onions and some garlic and uh, we're gonna leave these greenhouses on for um, probably a few more weeks at least because we're expecting snow next week um, and probably put off planning the rest of that until that snow is done. Um, we're planning on putting some beets and carrots in this other side. Um, we've got 
a couple of beds where we haven't planted anything yet. Um, planning on putting some herbs into this little one. Thinking cilantro and dill maybe and um, this is going to be our salsa garden. Um, do some tomatoes and peppers and basil which is my favorite. And then in this one you can see these greenhouses um, they were pretty cheap to put together but they work pretty good. You can see all the the water condensing on there. Um, they are uh, it keeps keeps the uh, vegetables pretty warm. So in here you probably can't see that but there's a little bit of green. We've got some spinach growing um, and there's also also some kale in there. Um, so we're looking forward to having some fresh greens. Uh, part of what we try to do is provide as much of our own food as we can. We're still starting off pretty small. We've lived in this house for two years now and um, first year we were here, no it was actually last year, um, one of our neighbors gifted us these three bigger raised beds and uh, all we had to do was um, lift them up over a fence and carry them halfway around the block. So um, not too bad, pretty cheap for what they are. And then here I've got my little herb garden space. We grow our culinary herbs there. Some of it I can use for teas. And well, so what's really great about these herbs, I do a lot of um, mint and oregano here. A friend of mine also gifted um, some cuttings from her garden or some splits from her garden and um, they've kind of been pretty happy there in this space that used to be a tree tr a tree stump. I hoped that um, the herbs might help break up that trunk and um, make it some better soil since herbs really tend to like to grow in non-optimal spaces. Um, our herb garden is also a really great um, pollinator, pollinator garden. And between this and um, this bed where we did some squash last year, hi, <laughs> uh, there was a lot of bee action and lots of pollinators and other bugs really made them happy. So plan to do the same thing this year as the season goes on. Um, and then, as you can see here, we actually just got our sidewalk removed. It went from uh, our garage over to our back door. And um, decided to do that so that we could level out our um, yard a little bit because it gets really damp and flooded here. So um, we're going to be doing a more permeable uh, walking surface. We plan on doing some slate stone and... Uh, sand and rock here so that the water can just go down and in this area we had a sidewalk that went just right out to the road and we're just gonna fill this in with dirt and maybe be able to use it for some more gardening space because you know we are pretty limited in the amount of space from the road and um, a little bit about this area over here we have some um, we have some bird feeders Right now they're in quarantine because um, we've had a very busy starling population out here that uh, was kind of decimating our seed and um, driving away all the songbirds. So, and then we have uh, a little, this is a pretty wild area right here. We're planning on digging this out and putting in a rain garden this spring after we finish up our sidewalk project. Uh, and then I just wanted to give you, a, uh, show you our, our compost area here. Uh, compost, I just love compost. It's uh, just this wonderful kind of easy thing you can do with your food waste and turn it into uh, black gold. So this side, here on the right is our active pile, and you know that's where we put our food waste. We use our uh, we use straw that we just buy from a local hardware store as our brown our brown material um, because 
we don't have a lot of trees in our yard and so we don't get a lot of leaves um, all the trees we have are evergreens so we use we get this straw and we mix it with uh, our food waste and it turns into um, dirt that and compost that we can put on our soil so this is our inactive area it's been sitting here since last fall um, or wait yeah no a year ago last fall and so it's ready to be emptied out this spring and spread on our gardens when we do end up opening them all up and um, after the threat of snow is gone so uh, one other quick area we have back here I've got a little bit of chives growing there again gifted to me for my friend Meredith thank you and over here we have our little asparagus bed. I haven't cleared out anything because, again, we're, we're expecting snow. So we've got a rhubarb. It's really starting to poke out and pretty exciting. And then I didn't show you it, but um, we also have a small strawberry bed. And uh, if you don't grow anything else, I would recommend strawberries because they are pretty easy to grow. And... Um, they're just beautiful. Uh, we put in our little bed a couple years ago. Yeah, the first year we moved in. And they just, they gave us two harvests last year. One in the spring and then um, one in the in the fall. And they kind of, they got kind of decimated when we pulled out the sidewalk. But I think they'll come back just fine. But these can be grown, you know, and in the ground obviously but they can also just be grown in containers and um they just bring me so much joy they're they're really just this really happy thing and i think they would make you happy too <laughs> they have the cutest little leaves and um when they blossom they have the prettiest little white blossoms and then of course they give you delicious strawberries so I hope you enjoyed that. Enjoy the rest of the programming today and uh, our next presentation will be at uh... our next next presentation will be with Reverend Jake. Uh, they're going to be giving us a presentation about direct action for climate justice and that's going to be at 1030. So go ahead and take a quick break and come back and join us for the rest of the presentations.